What the philosophers say about reality is often as deceptive as when you see a sign in a secondhand store that reads, Pressing done here. If you went in with your clothes to have them pressed, you would be fooled. The sign is for sale. Soren Kierkegaard For a long time, I merely put up with life, but never got to live it. Everybody's trying to sell you a quick fix. Salesmen sell you cars. Self-help gurus sell you methods. Preachers sell you doctrines. Lecturers sell you philosophies. Doctors sell you pills. When the pills don't work, they'll sell you a surgery. Question is, how long will you keep buying it? People fail to understand that in every moment, they choose the life they are living. So long as you think your salvation is somewhere out there, you're going to create a big, big mess out of everything. Every day is a new moment. Every second is a new day. When do you want to wake up? Something you begin to notice as you become more and more self-aware is how our characters are pretty thin. The veil that hides us from this world, that persona that we put on, it's a thin veil. And with this realization, you, you sort of see when you go about your day how people break out of character, you know, um, and it, it comes to this realization that a lot of us are just barely holding on. Um, you know, you see people in, in sporadic moments throughout the day, whether that's in traffic, uh, at the grocery store or at a restaurant sometimes you witness that <clears throat> quick moment where they break out of their character for a second and most of the time it's you know it's anger or frustration or a deep resentment that reveals itself if only for a brief moment And it really got me thinking about this. It makes me realize more and more how most of us, it seems like most of us just merely put up with life. And it's because of this merely putting up that it's so easy to break us out of the character that we're pretending to be because a lot of the times we we aren't the person that we try to pretend that we are isn't really who we are and our whole mistake and the the, the biggest reason why we're so depressed and anxious and we have all these mental health problems I really do believe it comes down to this we have this deep fear of revealing who we really are you know the the being underneath the persona 
And so we put on this persona, but then it's so thinly veiled that any moment of frustration or unpleasant surprise will just reveal, will break that, will break us out of that character. And it's, it's so funny to watch once you, once you start to see it. Um, but the whole reason why we break out of our character and oftentimes when we, when that happens, it shows our dark side. The whole reason that happens is because we put so much effort in trying to deny what is, you know, supposedly our dark side that it gets repressed so deep and at some point, you know, the energy has to release somehow. And so they happen through these unconscious situations where we just burst out in anger or impatience or frustration. And the whole reason we burst out in these ways is because we deny ourselves the other 95% of the time. Now, if we were true to, more true to ourselves, we would allow how we actually feel in every moment rather than always trying to pretend like we're okay. Because our whole, the whole reason why we're so anxious and depressed and barely holding it together is because we won't admit it to ourselves, right? We keep playing this character of, oh, I'm okay. You know, I'm good. Yeah, how are you? Oh, I'm good. You know, right? I hate that question. I think it's a very funny question. When I get asked, you know, hey, how are you? And then it's this, this me mechanical response. Oh, I'm good. You know, even when deep down, that's not how we really feel, right? And I think, so we've been brought up to, to validate our lives based on external measurement, external morality, external ethics, but it's, a lot of the times it's all fake, you know? You see people who are financially rich, but psychologically poor, right? They've, we, we, we're so attached to external indications, AKA symbols for the real thing that we've completely forgotten. And we even disregard the internal. So you see people who are externally rich but internally poor. You see people who are externally happy but internally sad. And the whole reason why this happens is because we, we aren't true to ourselves, you know? It's because of this fear of being true to how we really feel and that's why we put on that persona. I don't know why my nose is. But you see how th when you see how thinly veiled that persona is, you realize that's not that's not who you are. And so why do you keep pretending to be somebody that you're not? And this is the whole mess that we're in. We, we do all this pretending, right? But this disparity of, of what's, what appears to be externally and what actually is internally, that's, that's the whole problem we have. We're, we're 
so obsessed with appearances and vanity that it no longer matters to us how, how we really feel deep inside because we just deny that, thinking that if we appear to be happy, then we will be happy. But I don't know, has that ever made you happy, appearing to be happy? And so when you live this sort of life, it's almost as if your whole existence becomes a phony one, right? You're just a phony because you're too afraid to admit to yourself how you really feel. And so you go about life trying to feel a certain way. But how could you try to feel a certain way, right? You, you feel sad or happy just the same way as your hands feel warm when you get close to a fire. You don't, you, you don't try, right? It just happens. And, and so you see, at, at one point, you you come to this realization that your supposed, your ego, your your conscious control of things, it doesn't really exist. In in terms of how you feel, right? And it's this whole tugging at your bootstraps, or uh, trying to tug your airplane seatbelt to try to get the airplane to take off. That's the whole effort of the ego, because you can't try to feel a certain way. And, and when you finally let that go and you allow your feelings to be without labeling them either good or bad, right or wrong, then you finally come in harmony with them. And that's the compassion that's the acceptance, that's the love, that's the freedom that all these sages and wise men, you know, the ancients, what they talked about. It doesn't matter if you want to take the Eastern route, the Buddha, Lao Tzu, Lao Tzu, or the Western route, Jesus Christ, right? When you realize that all of these great awakened beings, they were trying to share the exact same message, only there's different ways of getting there and explaining it. And when you start to understand what it truly means to be religious, you realize that when one becomes aimless, then life becomes the pilgrimage. But you have these religions who tell you the pilgrimage is to Jerusalem or to somewhere else, somewhere holy, right? And so all of these religions that have developed as a result of all these great awakened beings, it's funny because they, the whole reason why religion has developed is because forgotten how, forgotten what it really means to be a truly religious person. And that's to see that the pilgrimage, the beauty, the love, the joy, the ecstasy, the bliss, you don't find it 
in a place or an achievement or a possession. You find it when you stop looking and stop trying, stop trying to attain. And you realize that every single moment is your attainment. And that the pilgrimage is your life. What did uh, Gandhi say? I think Gandhi said, my life is my message. Right? But then you have all these people following religions. But what it really comes down to is blindly obeying dogmas. And in, in this obedience to dogmas, and it's this false hope of one day attaining the very thing that's always right under your feet. Start to understand that condemnation of certain actions, certain beliefs, certain behaviors of others is really just condemnation of the self because what you deny in others you also deny in yourself not realizing that you have the same capacity and same even the same tendency to do those actions given the right circumstances So in order to become whole, to become fulfilled, you have to embrace that. Because you think about it, how could you ever become whole if you're pushing parts away, right? By definition, becoming whole is the harmonious integration of all things. No more distinctions, no more good and bad, right and wrong. You see the oneness and the harmony of all things and you allow everything to be just the same way that the universe does, that mother nature does. And it, it is this unconditional allowing that is the essence of the saying that God is love. Because ultimately, you are love too. Only we have, we've developed this very schizophrenic definition of love. But what love really means is compassion and acceptance of all things. And on, in order to do that, you have to stop praising and you have to stop condemning in order to see the wholeness and how good and bad, short and tall, right and wrong are the same coin only they're 
two sides. philosophy and deep existential discussion. If so, um, shoot me a subscribe, give the video a like, I would appreciate it. And until next time, see you in the next one. The grass yields to the wind, the sky yields to the stars, the water always goes where it is lowest, yet man remains busy trying to attain what is highest. But the greatest strength lies in gentleness. Stop. Relax into who you are in this moment and stop trying to run away from it all. Lean into it. You're almost home.